All right, Algebra 2, Section 1.3 is all about writing equations. Um, the line of best fit, that is going to be coming later at a different point. For right now, we're just doing writing equations. And this is something that we've already started to do. Um, here we have a warm-up. And a warm-up typically means you try it. And then you can check your answers. Since I'm not here in person, you can check your answers. Um, what you are going to want to do is just pause the video, try these on your own, and then unpause the video because I'm going to go right into the answers. So um, this is determine a reasonable domain and range for the situation. Write your answer in set notation. So reasonable domain would be um, the input for the situation, and then the range would be the output. Um, this is different than when we were doing our name graph because this is like real life application. So you kind of have to think about what do you have to have first, what goes into it, and then what comes out of it. So I'm going to read, a professional basketball player earns $150,000 for each game played, and there are 82 games in the season. So the domain has got to be the thing that happens first that determines the other part of the situation. So for the basketball player, they have to play games to earn money. So the domain in this case are going to be the number of games. And then the range is going to be the money earned. So the domain, we want to think about the lowest number of games that they could play and the highest number of games. There are 82 games in a season. The basketball player could play zero games. Or the basketball player could play all the way up to 82 games or somewhere in between. Uh, for the range... Basketball player earns $150,000 for each game played. So the least amount of money that the basketball player would earn would be $0. And that's if they played zero games. Now, if they played all 82 games, I'm grabbing my calculator right now because I do not feel like multiplying those by hand. They're going to earn... $12.3 million. So that would be the um, most amount that they could win. Did I do that math right? 150 times, 150,000 times 82. Yep. Okay. Next is you eat uh, up to five meals a day with an average of 844 milligrams of potassium at each meal. So we need to think, what do you have to have first that determines the other thing? So our domain Our domain would be the number of meals. That's going to determine the range. Um, uh, like the number of milligrams of potassium. I'm just abbreviating it. Okay. So let's see, you eat up to five meals a day. You could eat no meals to five meals per day. So the range would be you could have no milligrams of potassium up to whatever five times 844 is, which is 4220, 4,220 milligrams of potassium. And then the third one, <clears throat> an average amount of money spent on food per person at an amusement park that can accommodate 2,500 people is $5.25. So we have to have people to determine how much um, food was bought, how much money was spent. So our domain is going to be the number of people. And that's going to range from nobody comes to the park to 2,500 people come to the park. And then our range, that's going to be that dollar amount. That can range from if nobody comes to the park, they're going to make $0 or spend $0, I should say. 
Or if 2,500 people come to the park, I'm going to multiply 2,500 times $5.25. And that's going to be $13,125. All right, that was a quick review on domain and range, but just with real life application, because today we're doing real life application. We have covered slope intercept form. Y equals MX plus B. Remember M is the slope. And then B is the Y intercept, but that's the coordinate. We write the Y intercept as zero B. Point slope form, M is the slope. And then X1, Y1 is the point. And then if we have two ordered pairs, we can use the slope formula to find M. And just a reminder, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Here we have a linear equation, but um, it's using data, like a real life application data. This graph shows the distance asteroid 2012 DA14 travels in X seconds. Write an equation of the line and interpret the slope. When we interpret the slope, and this is what you're going to be doing in your assignment, when we interpret the slope, you write it in words, write the meaning in words. Okay, and we're going to have words over here. You're going to see time is the x axis, distance is the y axis. The slope is always the change in the y's over the change in the x. It's always going to be the y values over the x values. And we know the formula for slope. So let's start by finding the slope of this situation. So M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. I can see we definitely have one ordered pair given to us. Now we can find another ordered pair. If they don't put a dot there, that doesn't mean there isn't one. Right here at zero, zero, that means at zero seconds, the asteroid has traveled zero miles. Zero seconds, zero miles makes sense. If no time has passed, it has not traveled anywhere. So we're going to use that as our second ordered pair or our first ordered pair. Uh, 24 minus zero. So we do the Y's over the X's. Five minus zero. And I get 24 over five. That does not reduce. <coughs> Since this is a real life application, we could change it into a decimal or a mixed number. We're just going to go with decimal here. And when I change that into a decimal, that's one number and it's over one. So when we interpret, it's okay to have this decimal here or a mixed number because we need to think about this as a real life application where we're talking about distance in miles over time in seconds. So I reduced this, I typed it in my calculator and I got 4.8 miles. And then this line means per one second. So the asteroid, travels 4.8 miles per second. This is interpreting the slope in this situation. So I turned it into a decimal over one so that I could write this um, um, interpretation per second. I wanted it to be one second. Now we're going to do the equation of the line. So we're going to do slope intercept uh, form. No, I lied. Point slope form, y minus y1 
equals m times x minus x1. And we have y minus, let's see, 24 equals 24 over 5 times x minus 5. So we've got y minus 24. I'm going to distribute that fraction. So we'll have 24 over 5x. Here I'm going to multiply 24 over 5 multiply it by a minus 5 over 1. When we multiply fractions, we go straight across. And remember, 5 has to be over 1. <coughs> Excuse me. I got uh, 24 times 5. That is, if you're doing um, um, mental math, 20 plus 4 times 5. So it would be 100 plus 20. So it would be 120 over 5. Um, here's another way of looking at it. If I take 24 and I times it by 5, but then I divide it by 5, those 5s are going to undo each other. Multiply by 5, divide by 5, I'm going to get negative 24. So that's going to be minus 24 right here. And then we are going to add 24 to both sides so that we can get it out of, um, so we can get it into slope intercept form. So this right here was point slope form. I want to make sure we know that's point slope form before you distribute. And then slope intercept form is y equals 24 over 5x. And then these 24s cancel out. And we have our equation. Now, I didn't necessarily have to do all this work. If I notice the y-intercept is at 0, 0, that means b is 0 in the equation. So I could just find my slope and my y-intercept and just put them here because this one, the y-intercept, is a very easy number to find. I wanted to go through it the long way just to make sure we keep practicing and know how to do it when we don't have easy answers. Question B, the asteroid came within 17,200 miles of Earth in February 2013. About how long does it take the asteroid to travel that distance? So if we've got Earth, and here's that asteroid, and the distance here is 17,200, let's say, what if that asteroid turned around and was coming towards Earth? How long would we have before it hit Earth? Let's see. So this 17,000 is going to be distance, and in our, in our picture up here, distance is the y-axis. So I know that my y-value is 17,200. We're asked to find how long, and that's the number of seconds, that's the x-value. So we're gonna use our equation above, and we're gonna plug in 17,200 for y, and if you're doing if you're solving this by hand, we have to cancel out 24 over 5. To cancel that out, we multiply by 5 over 24. And I'm not going to ask you to multiply this by hand, but just remember we go straight across when we multiply fractions. So I'm going to get 17,200 times 5, which is 86,000 over 24, and then I'll take 86,000 divided by 24, and I get that x is, um, on my calculator it gives me 3583.3 repeating, and this is just saying about how long, so that's saying approximately how long. Um, I would say that 0.3 of a, um, second is not really going to matter. So I would say that it's approximately 3,583 seconds. But if I told you you had 3,583 seconds to do something, you might not truly understand if that's a lot of time or not. So maybe we could take that and we could 
um, divide it by 60. And that's giving me about 59.7 and then the twos repeating on my calculator. Um, and that's how many minutes it would be. And so when we look at that, we're like, oh gosh, just under an hour. Basically, we've got about one hour. Now, what you round to is going to be usually determined by directions, but I just wanted to show you um, some different possibilities. All right, so student practice. <clears throat> this would be a place where you could pause it and try it on your own and then check your answers by unpausing the video again. I'm going to keep going because you can pause the video. The graph shows the remaining balance Y on a car loan after making X monthly payments. Write an equation of the line and interpret the slope and Y intercept. What is the remaining balance after 36 payments? So if you know anything about cars, they don't typically cost, um, well, before I say that, let's just look at this um, graph and we look at the X axis and the number of payments is gonna be our input. The number of payments is our X value. And then the balance, thousands of dollars, is our Y value. So this 018 is going to mean that we have paid zero payments. And we owe 18. But the cars don't cost 18. So please look carefully. This is in thousands of dollars. So that 18 is actually 18 in real life, $18,000 that you would still owe on that loan. And that's how that um, ordered pair is set up. So this ordered pair right here would be after 10 payments, we owe $15,000 still. We need to interpret the slope. So we have two ordered pairs given to us. We're going to find the slope and then we're going to interpret it. So I'm going to do Y2 minus Y1, 15 minus 18 over 10 minus zero. So I get negative three over 10, which is negative three tenths. Or we could write that as negative uh, 0 0.3. over one. Now this 0 0.3 is in thousands of dollars. Um, if it makes more sense for you to write this in thousands of dollars, then that's going to make this look a little bit different. So when I take it all the way down to um, the slope in words that I might recognize that I can um, uh, interpret and write in words, this is going down to $300 per one payment. So we could say, um, and it's negative. So you are paying or your balance, let's say we're balance decreases by $300 per payment. So I've got to change my words a little bit. This decreases right here is taking care of that negative sign. So I don't have to write negative 300. I'm writing it goes down by $300. And that's per one payment. And that's that bottom number, the one. Interpret the y-intercept. So on our graph over here, the y-intercept is where the graph crosses that y-axis. And I kind of already interpreted it up there, but let me write it in um, more of like a sentence form. So um, I'll say at... Uh, the start of the loan
you owe eighteen thousand dollars for the car so at the start of the loan that is saying that the number of payments would be zero you have not paid anything so it's the very start of that loan you could also say after paying nothing on the loan like you could word it in your own way but it basically has to say that information and then we're going to find the equation of the line so we have the slope, um, but I need to go back to three tenths because this graph um, is not counting in thousands. It's counting in one number, 1,000 at a time, but it's, we don't have the thousand out there. So I'm going to go back to that three tenths and we're going to do point slope form, Y minus, and it doesn't matter which ordered pair you use. If it were me, I would use the ordered pair with a zero in it because that's easier. So I'm going to do y minus 18 equals our slope, which was negative three tenths. That was before I put those thousands in there, multiplied by x minus zero. So y minus 18, so that's point slope form here. We're going to write it in y equals mx plus b. We're going to change it. So um, uh, distribute the negative three tenths and we get negative 3 tenths x, and then anything times zero is zero, so I don't have to write it. Then we're gonna add 18 to both sides, and we'll have y equals negative 3 tenths x plus 18. And that's gonna be the equation in slope-intercept form. You may have noticed the y-intercept is 0, 18. So if you notice that sooner, you could have a little shortcut of putting the b value there rather than using point-slope form. <clears throat> then the last part of this assignment, or these notes, would be uh, modeling with mathematics, where we've got um, two prom venues. They charge a rental fee plus a fee per student. This table shows the total costs for different number of students at the Lakeside Inn. So the table is for Lakeside Inn. Then we also know the total cost in dollars, Y in dollars for X students at Sunview Resort is represented by the equation Y equals 10X plus 600. We have to know which venue charges less per student and how many students must attend for the total cost to be the same. So we need to interpret some things here. Plus, this is given to us in table form. This is given to us in equation form. So which venue charges less per student? This here is a rate. And when we have um, y equals mx plus b, the rate is the slope. So which venue charges less per student? We need to compare the slopes. So I'm gonna start at Lakeside Inn. I am not given the slope. I'm giving a bunch of ordered pairs. I'm given if we do 100 students, we have $1,500 for total cost. 125 students, 1,800. So we're given relationships. We're given ordered pairs, input X, output Y. So I'm gonna use my slope formula and it doesn't matter which two ordered pairs you use. I'm just gonna use the top two, 1,800, minus 1500 over 125 minus 100. It's going to give me 300 over 25, which is 12. <coughs> so the slope for Lakeside Inn, Lakeside Inn is 12. For Sunview Inn, the slope is easily identified in y equals mx plus b format, the slope is 10. So we're gonna compare them and which one charges less per student. We're gonna say that Lakeside Inn
Oops, charges less. Oops, that's not even the right answer. I don't even know what I was thinking there. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to say that Sunview in charges less per student. We can even say it charges um, $2 less per student. But this is the first answer. <clears throat> How many students must attend for the total cost to be the same? We can do this possibly with a table. We could also do this with a graph, which we will go and graph it in a moment down below. I'm going to start with a table. So for Sunview in, number of students, total cost. <clears throat> I'm going to start using the um, values that Lakeside Inn uses. And then I'm going to input 100 into the equation. So I'll have 10 times 100. Let me zoom in because I'm going to run out of space here. I have to move it. Just move it over a teeny bit. I'll put it over there. Okay, 10 times 100 plus 600. We'll do 10 times 125 plus 600. I'm just using my calculator to make this go fast. So as I'm writing these down, I'm comparing um, to Lakeside. And for 100 students, Lakeside is cheaper. For 125 students, Lakeside is cheaper. 150 students, oops, 10 times 150 plus 600. We get 2100. And you can see that this is when they are equal. So I'm just going to do one more. Um, 175. So 175 students. Um, and then when we compare that one, we can see that Sunview in is cheaper at that point. So how many students must attend for the total cost to be the same? If 150 students attend, the costs will be the same at $2,100. So there's the second answer. Then here we have what if Maple Ridge charges a rental fee plus $10 fee per student. The total cost is $1,900 for 140 students. Describe the number of students that must attend for the total cost at Maple Ridge to be less than the total costs at the other two venues. And we're going to use this graph to justify our answer. <clears throat> so here they're giving me a rental fee, um, a rental fee plus $10 fee per student. So that word per is telling me we have a rate. And when we have a rate, that's our slope. If we know the total cost is 1,900 for 140 students, that's giving me an X value of number of students and a Y value of total cost. So what I have here is an ordered pair, 140, 1,900. So if I have the slope and a point, I'm gonna use point slope form. So we're going to do y minus y1 equals slope times x minus x1. 
So Y minus, my Y1 is uh, 1900, I believe. Yeah, 1900. Our slope is 10. And then X minus 140 students. Okay, so that's point slope form. I'm gonna change that into slope intercept form by first distributing the 10. And then adding the 1900. And I get 10x plus 500. This 500 is the y-intercept at 0, 500. Um, let me look at the, we're going to graph all of these. So let me find some other y-intercepts here. Oh, we never found the equation of this graph. Um, let's see, the y-intercept for this one is 0, 600. And I'm actually going to change the color here. Let's see. We're do I was writing this one mainly in black, so I'll say that the y-intercept here is 0, 600. Um, this one I'll do in blue, and then this one I'll do in pink. Um, since we have numbers like 500 and 600, um, my, my, uh, for my y-intercept, um, I'm definitely going to have to have hundreds along this side. They definitely jump up pretty far when we start putting in lots of students. So I need to accommodate, you know, maybe 3,000. I just kind of want to think about how I want to set up my graph. How many do I have here? Um, it looks like I just took like 12 and I, and I know I need to go up to 3000. So I just took, uh, 3000 divided by like 12 little marks and it says to go 250 each mark. You don't have to label all the numbers. If you have some of them, then anybody looking at your graph can figure out what you're counting by. And remember it has to go up by the same amount of the X value. Those are the number of students. So... I'm going to look at my numbers of students here. I've got one to 200 up there. So maybe having one to 200 would be good. <clears throat> um, Yikes, I'm sorry, that was so messy. I'm trying to write total venue cost, but I'm writing it sideways on the screen. Can't really turn my computer. <laughs> okay, um, since the slopes are like 10 and 12, and I wanna make this easy on myself, um, maybe, mm, I don't know, counting by 20s or maybe counting by, yeah, maybe counting by 20s will work. I guess we'll find out. 20, 40, 60, 80, there's a thousand. All right. So the pink one, we have a Y intercept at 0, 0,500. I know that at 140 students, we have, oops, that's not a thousand, that's a hundred, sorry. That would be right here at 140. For 140 students, we have 1,900. So there's 500, there's 1,000, there's 1,500 here, and there's 2,000. So it's almost 2,000. It's not going to be super accurate, but we're close. Oops, that was supposed to be pink. And so I can use my straight edge.
and there's uh, Maple View, what's it called? Maple Ridge, Maple Ridge. All right, um, for Lakeside Inn, which I'm gonna use blue for, there's just a bunch of ordered pairs. So we could do 100 is 1500, 100 is 1500, oops. Um, 100 is 1500 right here. And then maybe I'll go to 150 is 2100. So 150 would be right in the middle here. 2100 would be about here. This is really not going to be super accurate. Um, I probably have more accuracy if I went and found the x intercept or the y intercept if I put this into slope intercept form by doing um, point slope form. So let me do that. Y minus, I'll just use the first order pair, 1500 equals our slope is 12 times x minus 100. So y minus 1500 equals 12x minus 1200. And then we're going to add 1500. And I get y equals 12x plus 300. So that y intercept is 300. And 300 is going to be about here. So I'm going to do my best to draw a blue line to connect these. All right, and then the third one, which I was going to do in black, we've got a y-intercept at 600. We started finding other ordered pairs, so I could use ordered pairs. I could also go up 10 over 1 um, or up 20 over 2 or um, up 200 over uh, 20. <laughs> or I could just use ordered pairs, 0, 600. So this is going to be set, oops. This is 750 right here. Let's see, 600. This is approximately, I'm not super accurate here. Um, we do know that at, where is it? Um, 150, 2100, they're equal. So 150, 2100. They're the same. You could find more ordered pairs. I'm just trying to hurry this along a little bit. So I'm not going to sit here and find a ton of other new ordered pairs. But here we've got the different costs. Um, so what was our question? It says, how many students must attend for the total cost at Maple Ridge to be less than the total cost of the other two venues? So we're looking at at all three graphs here where Maple Ridge, which I made in pink, is um, the least amount. Than the other two venues. So, Really, Maple Ridge is only less than the other two venues way out here. Um, it's less than just the blue one for a while after this ordered pair where they're the same at 100, 1500. Let me write that down. So at this ordered pair here, 100, 1500, um, the pink one is lower. But to be lower than both of them, we have to go past um, where the black and the pink, where the black and the pink go together, which is somewhere way over here. So I would say probably right here at 100, 1500 would be the best answer. That's where it's below the blue one and it's already below the black one for a very long time. So after... 100 students, that would be the best answer. 
All right, you have a worksheet. If you have any questions, you can definitely contact me um, or you can ask your sub this week.